Sudesh from Just Gaza. Today, we continue our coverage of the, to- of the top tactics that, that were employed by some of the best players in the Chess 44th Chess Olympiad. We continue with the Uzbekistan team, which won the gold medal after at the culmination of the tournament. Today, we'll be looking at the tactics of, uh, of Uzbek Grandmaster Kawakar Sindarov and um, whatever tactics that the top three tactics that he employed. So let's d- dive straight into it. This is round four. It's Chavakar Sindarov playing the black pieces against the Wesley So of the United States of America playing the white pieces. Um, as you can see, this is move 24. The last move that Wesley So, so played was G4. Um, and as you can see, uh, Wesley uh, So is like a pawn up against uh, Chavakar Sindarov in the game. Um, so has six pawns and um, Sindarov only has five pawns. So that's the only material uh, deficit that Sindarov Javakar, Javakar Sindarov has. But uh, he's doing good positionally. Uh, although these two pawns are, you know, could be dangerous. These three, these, this brilliant pawn island is doing a good job defending uh, on the, the king side. Um, yeah, the, the double rooks on the B file, it, it's doing a wonderful job as well. Uh, grabbing hold of the semi-open B file, the spawn will soon fall as well as we will soon see. So yeah, the last move that Wesley so made was C4 to this. Uh, Javakar Sindarov uh, momentarily sacrificed one of his pawns when he's down materially to gain some positional gain. Um, so he pushes the C, C4 pawn. Obviously, it can be killed with the pawn. It can be killed with this, uh, the rook. It can be killed with the pawn. It's a sacrifice and there's no one defending it. So that's what uh, uh, Sindarov Javakar, uh, I'm sorry, Wesley so does do. He cannot. He does not want to capture with the pawn because then it will create two isolated pawn islands, and he does not want that. Uh, he wants these two pawns to be, uh, you know, uh, to stuck together because after this, sorry, uh, after this pawn falls through captures on C C uh, C four, these two pa- pawns will both be passed pawns, and they can do a brilliant job defending each other with the help of the king later on in the game. So yes, that's the plan. That's why uh, Wesley so captures the pawn with the uh, rook. This is what <laughs> this is what uh, uh, Javakar Sindarov anticipated and wanted Wesley so to play. So now comes knight knight to c5. Uh, the thing is, uh, it's not a great fourth because it's well, you just lose a pawn and not even you, you don't even lose a pawn. You just exchange the pawn that he just <laughs> captured. So uh, it also, it attacks the rook on d3 and it attacks the ba- pawn on b3. Obviously, obviously, if you thought that the rook can simply go here and protect the pawn, it's not possible because the bishop on this long diagonal beautifully controls the c3 square. Uh, it's always, you know, it, it's always fun when the uh, king's Indian defense is played um, by by players and uh, the, uh, the the bishop is on this long diagonal. It can it it always does wonders for for the team for the player who played it. Um, so the only move here is to retract your rook back to a more safe. A safer square. If you put the you put, put your rook on d2 after the right captures on b b3, you'll again have to move that because because it will be attacked there once again. So uh, Wesley so obviously sees all this. He just goes it takes it way further back where uh, there's no no uh, threat of being lost. Uh, no threat of a, a new attack on the rook. And obviously knight captures on b3. So this was what uh, Chaukar Sindarov had in mind while pushing that pawn. It was not a sacrifice, it was an exchange uh, because he knew, he knew that these two pawns are way too strong and he he, he has to do something. Okay, see, uh, here on the king side, it's three versus four and it's it's sort of manageable uh, with this pawn on the queen side, on the d file. Yeah, that also controlling, also keeping in check this pawn on, on e3. But he knew that the pawns on... Uh, the pawns on A and B files were very strong for him, so he wanted to just break the pawn structure. And well done, Javakar Sindarov. Uh, interestingly enough, Wesley So is one pawn up still. Uh, he, they'll soon equalize on material, but uh, Javakar Sindarov does resign the game, he loses the game. And this is the first game that we have covered in, in a series of the tactics so far, where uh, the tactics that we are covering, the games uh, in which the tactics we are covering that we were played. Uh, the, the the game was lost by the player we are covering. So Javakar Sindra loses this game against Wesley So in round four of the Chess Olympiad. But this was a good tactic that I wanted to show you nonetheless. 
Moving on, this is the sixth round. Uh, it's uh, Javakar Sindhra playing the white pieces against Arjun Arigesi of India, um, the Indian Grand Master. And as you can see, this game ended in a draw. It's not a lost game. Um, so yeah, the last move that Arjun played was uh, A5. Here, Javakar Sindhra responds with B4. Now he knows that uh, as as soon as he pushes, Arjun wants to capture it because he can put his rook on on the open file, uh, e file, and you know Harris the king, which which hasn't castled yet. And yes, it's just a good deal for Arjun, so uh, he will capture it. Uh, so uh, that's that's what uh, Arjun had in mind, but that's exactly again what Jawakar Sindra wanted him to play. So after a captures on a captures on b4 and a captures on b4 once again. As expected, uh, Arjun puts his rook on a8, grabbing hold of the uh, open a file. Obviously, you cannot put your rook here because the rooks are not connected because the king is still not castled. Um, Arjun sees all this while his rooks are connected very beautifully. So even if you put, sorry, even if you put your rook here, uh, Arjun has no intention of moving it anywhere if the rooks are further connected in the future or something like that. So rook to a1, uh, sorry, rook to a8. Here, very interestingly. Um, Javakir Sindharov does not castle, which is an option. His king has not moved, his rook has not moved. But he instead uh, goes for uh, the bo a bomb cloud move. Um, <laughs> he plays uh, king to f2. So this this achieves the purpose of connecting the pawns. That's all right. Uh, uh, for connecting the rooks, I'm sorry. Um, so that's 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 achieved. But it can also be could have, it could have been done by uh, castling also. But he thinks that uh, the the g one square, the g one square would be uh, too inactive for the king to remain at, and he does not think that g one square is really uh, worth wasting the time over because you will have to eventually bring your king back to f two or f one uh, in order to uh, keep it in the game because these two files are open. The rooks can inf infiltrate through this these files, the opponent's rooks. That's why he feels like the f two square is better for. The king right now, the the rook can easily come into the game now whenever it wants to. So this is one interesting uh, thing that he does. Also about the open a file that we were talking about, he he knew that uh, the opponent will have hold of it, but he had plans for that as well. So after g6, he decides to kick away the rook from the a open a file. He play he goes uh, bishop to e4, and here Arjun just moves his rook away to the semi open. C file and attacks the rook on C3, puts some pressure on it so the knight cannot move until this pawn is reinforced again. Here, you can obviously, you might think that he can just uh, keep hold of the open file by going on any of these squares. This sounds like a good bargain, right? You come to the seventh, uh, you could come to the second rank and uh, uh, the rook is here, the king is on the same rank. But it doesn't do much because obviously you cannot take, capture this rook, uh, this knight because it's protected by the king. Obviously, king to f2 was the right idea because it protects the knight here. It's closer. The king is closer to the game. If the king was on g1, had he castled uh, instead of playing king to f2, then this knight would be hanging and Arjun would have had this beautiful rook to a2 move, infiltrating the defenses and will have to do something about the knight. However, it's not the case. And any other square that the rook goes to, uh, rook to a1 would just win this file again as uh, as uh, you the, the the white white rooks are connected, but the black rook they will be alone. So even if even after uh, the a rook trade, um, Zawakar Sindra would hold control of the open a file. So very brilliantly played by Zawakar Sindra over here. Uh, both the moves, um, the b4 pawn b4 pawn push and a captures and b4 a captures and b4 that was amazing. Now uh, there are two. There is this one pawn for Arjun against two of uh, Sindaro Javakir's Javakir Sindaro spawns. The A file is beautiful. Uh, uh, obviously, Javakir Sindaro will take hold of the A file now. Open A file. He, he soon doubles his rook also on the A file. And the the move king to F2 was just amazing, amazing move. So yes, this was these were two small tactics combined into like played simultaneously by Javakir Sindaro in his match against. As an Erigacy in round 10 of uh, round 6 of the 44th Chess Olympiad. I thought this was really interesting. Castling is always like the safest move that we go for, right? But <laughs> obviously, after Vladimir Karanik, uh, Chavakar Sindhara wants to go for the no castle game. Yes, that was the uh, that was, those were the two tactics from round 6. Now we move on to the third and the final tactic for the video, round 10. 
it's javake chandra playing the black pieces against pragananda r of india to the uh, it's two 16 <laughs> 16 year olds playing each other uh, uzbekistan the uzbek team is a team of youngsters as is the india two team surprisingly uh, with players like abu satra on their back also 17 years old and pragananda r um, and all his all his teammates also very very young players so this, this is a battle of <laughs> of uh, not even adult of adolescent teenagers right uh, so jawke sindra versus pragnananda r um the last move that praga made was e5 um here you know here uh, as you can see you know if if you guys have been following us on this channel long enough i had uploaded uh, three tech, top three tactics by r pragnananda in the 44th chess olympiad in that video also we had kept, we had covered this game exactly this game uh, from pragnananda's point of view where he had beautifully trapped this uh, bishop uh, of Chauke Chandrao on a2 um so this is a continuation of that 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 itself uh, props to praga for uh, trapping this this bishop easily uh, he had played brilliant he played he played brilliantly in the game but now we look at how jauke chandrao got out of this this mess this this sort of blo- blockade that the king and the pawn had done uh so yeah it's the same tactic with <laughs> from both of the opponents perspective from, from both from the perspective of both the players that's the that's the thing here yes so after after e5 um jauke chandrao sees sees uh, potential here this this bishop on e2 is hanging the queen cannot really move it doesn't have the liberty to move because then this will be really hanging and after a series of exchanges here uh, the rook will be directly attacking it that's the that's the point that he's going for so bishop captures on e5 knight captures on e5 rook captures on e5 uh jawakin sindra was more than happy to gain a pawn and exchange pieces to open up space for his rook uh finally he can start you know uh, executing the rescue of this bishop out of this mess um yeah queen to c queen to c3 um <clears throat> queen to c queen to c5 exchanging a trade of queens obviously pragananda declines because he wants the queens on the board he needs the queens for win he needs the queen for winning and to to capitalize on this pawn situation so queen to b2 uh, and finally bishop captures on b3 uh, the, the 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 bishop is finally free the queen cannot capture as uh, the rook captures on e2 we told we, i told you earlier that the bishop on e2 is hanging if the queen moves queen leaves this rank uh, and that was the that was jawake sidrao's point of view when he ma- made the series of exchanges exchanges on the e5 square and yes the pawn the bishop is more or less free now it it races back to a safe square uh, with uh, with the support of the pawn it's behind the rook and that's how sindrao uh, jawake sindrao uh, gets out of the the very tricky trap that pragananda laid out for his bishop So yeah, the, those were the three tactics uh, de- deployed by Dawke Sundaro in the game. As you can, as you might have noticed, Dawke Sundaro lost the last game that we showed the round ten against Pragnan Pragnan and the R. So two of the three tactic, two of the three games uh, of the tactics that we covered today were lost by Dawke Sundaro. But th- it doesn't matter. Great tactics nonetheless. Uh, interestingly enough, those were the only two games uh, round four against Wesley So and uh, round ten against Pragnan and the R. that jawake sindra lost in the entire tournament out of 11 games um but yeah so these were the three tactics uh, that's it from my side for today i hope you guys understood the tactics and thank you all for watching